So the Minister for Education has published the roadmap for the full return to school. But this sets, sets out a plan for what schools will look like within a COVID-19 context. It has been developed with public health advice issued by the Health Protection Surveillance Centre and the Department of Health in conjunction with the Health and Safety Authority. This document provides key messages to minimise the risk of COVID-19 for students, staff, families and the wider community while recognising the importance of education on the health and well-being of the students. It is important for us all to accept that no interpersonal activity is without risk of transmission of infection at any time. However, with a collaborative effort, we can all minimise this risk within our schools. There is a primary school and a post-primary school um, protocol available on the website, um, which includes social distancing guidance and standard infection prevention and control measures which need to be taken and reiterated to our children. Awareness by the staff, students and parents into how to protect themselves and each other by ensuring they do not attend school if they're showing any signs of respiratory infection or if someone in the home is suspected or known to have COVID-19. So key here is communication. You've been told by your MS team that the disease modifying therapy that you're on or about to go on requires you to cocoon for a certain length of time. Now you'll have discussed this at home with your family and your daughter. So she needs to be aware of the risk to you and your family should um, any of you get the coronavirus. Now you're obviously going to try and balance this with not frightening her too much or not putting too much responsibility but she needs to know that she needs to be extra vigilant within the school then I would talk to the school her form or her base class um, teacher and explain to them why she needs to be extra vigilant um, According to the HSE website, other members of the household do not need to cocoon if they're under 70 or if they don't have a high risk condition themselves. However, obviously, they're all going to help you to stay well by following the advice um, and hygiene, both at home and school, social distancing. Um, she, because she's going to third year, she will be wearing a face mask if they're unable to maintain the two meter um, social distancing within the school. So she needs to know about that and, and to discuss that in the school also with her teachers. She needs to spend as little time as possible in shared rooms, again, both in school and at home. She needs to be aware of, that the room should be well ventilated. She would need separate towels herself at home. Um, she'd need to know the importance of cleaning the bathroom before and after her own use. Um, wipe down of surfaces and objects that are frequently touched. Um, all in an effort to maintain the cocooning for the length of time that needs to be done. Um, and you'll get that advice from your MS team. So firstly, I would advise keep checking gov.ie because the plans are changing all the time. Just to recap, the Minister for Education has published the roadmap for the full return to school and it sets out a plan for what schools will look like within a COVID-19 context. Um, some of the recommendations for secondary schools would include all available space in the school to be maximised, as we know maintaining as much distance as is reasonably practical between people in the classroom is likely to have a substantial um, positive effect. Decreasing interaction between pupils will depend on each school's settings, but can be achieved by limiting the interactions in shared spaces, for example, um, in hallways, outside offices, at break times, discouraging social physical contact if students need to move about within the classroom to perform activities such as shared resources. This should be organized to minimize um, congregation around that one resource um, or a shared resource. 
Um, avoid sharing personal items, pins, other writing materials and phones, any keyboard surfaces, tablet devices that are being used. These all need to be cleaned regularly and hand hygiene encouraged. As far as possible, students would remain in the classroom and perhaps the teachers would move between the rooms. Double classes would be planned to minimize movement during the day. Where class movement is required, this should be staggered so that there's a minimized interaction between pupils. Um, class spaces should be configured to maximize physical distancing by removing unnecessary furniture. Use large classes or large, larger halls where the desks could be spaced out or perhaps split them into smaller groups and th those groups stay together. Timetables should be reviewed to stagger configuration of students. Live streaming should be planned, maybe on a rotational basis, and other community spaces may be utilized if planned from the school's, the management board's perspective. Um, and then as of the 6th of August, there's interim guidance for the use of face coverings in childcare and educational settings. Um, which is provided by the HPSC on the, on the 6th of August, which have made the following recommendations. If the two meter for secondary school students, if the two meters cannot be maintained, then the students and staff should wear face uh, coverings. This should be reviewed um, and it, where possible, no student should have to wear a face covering for the full of the day.